Hey everybody, how's it going? It's The Daily Shooter, and I've been doing reviews and tests of body armor for nearly a decade now. I've seen just about everything come through, from your soft armor to composite armor to steel, different cuts, bends, shapes. I mean, for a long time there, really all you could find was just flat panels. Now we have all sorts of different curves. But the one thing that people have the most questions about still to this day is which do I get? Do I get steel body armor, which is what this is right here, or do I get a composite body armor panel? Which one's better? Is it really worth the extra money and why? When you can't find this or you can't afford it, you need one of these. The Hits Arms Laser Training Bullet for dry fire practice. With its rubberized strike surface and cutout around the leading edge, it can be used safely in both single and double action. The red laser is an instant indicator of shot placement, allowing you to make adjustments and practice at home. There's nothing better for instant response dry fire practice. Use it in your living room, use it in your bedroom. Make sure you follow all the safety rules. Get yourself a Hits Arms laser training bullet. Link down below. Now, both these body armor panels, the steel, and the composite are going to be from RTS Tactical. RTS Tactical has some great deals. They have bundles, combos, where you can get the carrier plus the plates and everything in between from helmets, gloves, all the way down. So that's some pretty cool stuff over there. Definitely worth checking out. So this right here is a steel body armor panel. Let's go ahead and start with that. So there is good and bad things about steel body armor. One of the good things is, and one of the things people like the most, is that it's more affordable typically than your composite body armor. So because of the price of steel, people tend to gravitate towards it, especially when you're looking at a bundle with a carrier or something like that, and you see the price with everything, including the plates, usually ends up pretty good. So people go towards steel. Will steel work? Absolutely, steel will work. If you have a level three or a level three plus plate, it's going to stop what you throw at it. Okay, so everything that it's rated up to, steel is going to stop. So that's a great thing about steel. Also, steel is multi-hit rated. You can hit this a hundred different times with several different calibers and it's not going to have any problems maybe a minor bulge in the back maybe a small little deformation but i have put hundreds of rounds on plates and still not had anything more than a tiny dimple so steel definitely does work but steel has some downsides one of the downsides is steel can be heavier than composite it's typically around i'd say anywhere from one pound to two and a half pounds heavier than your composite plates that's going to wear on you. If you're going to be wearing it for, you know, an extended period of time, those extra couple pounds, and we're talking about two plates, so maybe, you know, up to five pounds difference if you add the two plates, I, that extra five pounds, you're going to feel it at the end of the day. So it is typically heavier. The other thing about steel is a lot of people don't remember to get the spall protection. This plate right here, you can see it's fairly thin, and that's because it has virtually no spall protection. What it has is a coating on it that basically just protects the steel itself from corrosion, from the weather, and stuff like that. So it gives the steel that's underneath here some type of protection it's not necessarily spall protection what spall is is when the bullet actually hits the body armor obviously all those fragments need to go somewhere if it's not going through the steel right well those fragments can go up into your neck into your arms if you're holding something out in front of you and all those little fragments basically just go flying everywhere like tiny little shards and so there's no protection you can add protection for that and that is something that i recommend to everybody if you're going to go with steel add spall protection that's going to bring the price up though and it kind of changes the the game when you're looking at a, a composite versus steel because now that you've upped the price on this is it better to just go with the composite so again it's multi-hit rated uh it's definitely more affordable but it's more heavy and you're gonna have to add that spall protection because steel on steel you know two different metals hitting each other it's not usually a very good thing now, another thing that I forgot to mention about the steel is that if you're going to be wearing steel, it's also best to wear what's called a trauma pad behind it. So again, that's going to kind of add to your overall expense. What a trauma pad is, it's a pad that goes behind the steel plate and it creates a barrier of soft protection for the energy transfer that's going to happen when that bullet hits the steel. So even though it doesn't go through, even though there might only be a small dimple, that energy is going to be transferred through that one specific spot. The plate does absorb a lot of the shock, but in steel, if it hits here, it's going to transfer right through to you and you're going to feel that hit. So getting a trauma pad lessens that by allowing some type of like a shock absorber uh, behind the pad so or uh, behind the plate, excuse me. 
Now, let's go ahead and move on now to composite. Now, composite, what I like about composite is it's kind of an all-in-one. So it has just about everything that we've talked about uh, through the previous armor, but it's all built into one plate. So trauma pad, uh, spall protection, all of that stuff, multi-hit rated is all going to be part of a composite plate like this. Now, I'm not talking about just like you know, Kevlar, okay, like a level 2A. I'm talking about a level 3 or a level 3 plus composite plate that typically is a little bit more than an inch in thickness. So basically, like I said before, everything is going to be located in here. And it is a series of materials that slows, fragments, and or stops the bullet completely. So what we'll have here is maybe a polymer in the front, a ceramic in the front, or some other material in the front that disturbs the bullet, kind of squishes it down, and then there'll be like a layer of Kevlar or other material as it goes through, and then maybe even a padding on the back. Those are all pushed together, they're squeezed together as one unit, and then you get a coating over it. So what's some of the downsides to this? Well, one of the downsides is it's typically more expensive. Uh, when you go for a composite, the price definitely does bump up. But again, if you add all of the things that we had to add to our steel, like the spall protection and the trauma pads, it's really not all that different, to be honest with you. It's definitely worth it to go this way. The only downside that I can see to a composite plate is going to be the price. Because with a composite plate, it's going to be 100% spall protection because when it hits, it actually goes into the plate. So it goes into the plate through the different layers, and then it catches everything inside the plate. Now, it is multi-hit rated. That means you can hit this thing multiple times in multiple locations. It's not going to take as many rounds as a steel plate, but let's be honest. I mean, who's going to be just standing around taking, you know, 100 hits before they actually found cover? Uh, you know, that's kind of the way that I look at it. If you get hit once or twice and you're on the ground, you're either going to get pulled out of the way or you're going to have to move out of the way or it's over anyway. So being able to take multiple hits is just fine. But again, not as many hits. But for me, it's kind of worth it because of that spall protection. Being able to basically envelop everything inside of this uh, is great. And it'll stop everything that it's rated for. So if it says it's going to stop up to uh, you know, 308, or it says it's going to stop up to 76251. I mean, whatever it's rated to. If it says it's rated to that, I've not had one that hasn't stopped that level of protection or better. The other thing is, they're way more lightweight. Like I was saying, between one and two and a half pounds lighter per plate than steel. That means when I have this on my body right here and I have one on my back, I'm saving two to five pounds throughout my entire setup. When you add magazines, you add the carrier, you add other gear, it all adds up and it adds up really, really fast, especially in a hot summer day like out here in Vegas. If I'm wearing something like this, it's going to hurt a lot less than if I'm wearing steel. Now, steel is always a good option for those people that are on a budget, but I'm telling you right now, if you can afford it, you get everything. The trauma pad, the spall protection, the multi-threat uh, levels, and the, the you know multiple hits that this thing can take. This is the way to go. Composite armor is the way to go. It is basically the, the best of both worlds, just at a slightly higher price. Now, I also want to point out that it doesn't matter which one you go with. They both have the same cuts available for each one. So if you want to go with a shooter's cut, if you want to go with a swimmer's cut, you'll be able to find both steel and composite plates for that specific cut. So if you have a specific diameter that you need for a carrier that you already have, if you need a specific cut for that carrier, you'll be able to find it in both steel and composite plates. But again, I tend to lean people if they can save up a little bit more money towards the composite. So, uh, you know, that's the gives and takes, the pluses and minus and the benefits to each particular one. Hope you guys learned a little bit of something. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and the like button. I really do appreciate it. You guys have a great day.